In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a story and how you can import a background of either a video or an image. If you launch Editor, then this is your starting screen. You find the new story button in the upper right part, with the help of which you can start your own story. Look for a place where you would like to save your story, give it a name, and press Enter. Test video story. Then you have immediately entered story view. You can add to or subtract files from the story by pressing plus and minus. You can undo actions with control Z. It is crucial to check settings by clicking the gear icon on the left. Player monitor ID should be two. Default prop scale should definitely be more than one. We use 7.50 on a 40 inch TV and it is perfect. Then click into a tile in story view to immediately enter the current scene as import background option becomes available. If this small window didn't pop up, then click on the icon in the upper left corner. If you go to import background, then you can select the image or video in any support format and the background opens in the scene immediately. By clicking on play in the menu on the left, you can now try how it looks on your extended screen. This will only work if a secondary screen, a lay down TV, monitor or projector with an aspect ratio of 16 to nine is connected. After you stop playing, your players will see a default splash screen that you can change if you go back to story view, left arrow icon or escape, and click on this button. The button below helps you in adjusting your splash image on the screen, fits it on the screen, or uses its original aspect ratio. You can set up custom splash screens for each of your stories, Clicking on a tile brings you back to the scene editor. Here, you should upload another map from the library. Find open library icon in the upper left corner that will open a panel on the right. Here you can choose from different types of assets and you'll also find a few built-in backgrounds and props. The first icon represents images, the second one, the sounds, the third one, the videos, the fourth one, the 3D models, the fifth one, the so-called animations, and the last one, the particle effects. Of course, you can use your own assets that you can add with this plus icon. You will find hundreds of animated maps on the Patreon page of Dynamic Dungeons. You can load a series of files or even a whole library with these buttons. By pressing Alt and dragging the video onto the scene, it will appear on it as background. If you simply just drag it, then it will behave as a so-called prop. In case you bring in something as prop by accident, then you can convert it to background with this button. The main difference between the two is that Fog of War acts upon the background. Props are more like tokens, other PNG images and particle effects that we use on the background. You can choose from four operation modes of use in the scene editor. Background mode, that we already touched upon already. Props mode, fog of war mode and grid mode. You can resize the background by scrolling the mouse or position the image or video with the right mouse button. The background can be brightened, colored, and mirrored too. After closing the background panel, you get into prop mode, which is there to move, resize, and color image and sound files, tokens, and effects. You can still also move your background in prop mode while clicking and holding the right button. Everything that's not background is a prop, 
and you can simply drag onto the scene. Props can also be colored, rotated, manipulated in other ways, plus you can manually set up a scale value too. When you press the Set as Default Scale button, then every prop will appear on the scene with a given value. In case this eye icon isn't crossed, then by clicking the Play button, your players will automatically see this prop. If you turn off visibility, then only you can see it and your players cannot. If a video is named as a weather preset, then by holding Ctrl and Alt and dragging it on the screen, then it will appear on the screen as a weather preset. If you only drag the weather preset on the screen as a prop by accident, then you can convert it to weather layer by clicking this button. From now on, the weather effect will only be available in Hierarchy, as other closed props are also available only there. Now let's talk about Fog of War a little. If you don't want your players to see the whole map, then by clicking into Fog of War mode and clicking Cover Everything, you can make everything go dark on the map for them. Then, as they uncover the realm, you can gradually reveal it with the brush or the rectangular tool. If you don't have a grid on your map, then you can add the quad or hex grid onto it in grid mode. You can set up its width, color, and opacity too. You can find a grid calculator on the bottom. All you have to do is give the diagonal size of your secondary screen running the player window in inch. This way the program will automatically set the measure that will show one inch squares on the screen. This size would be standard in the world of tabletop gaming. The software automatically saves your modifications, but you have the choice to create a copy and to save everything you made as a so-called bundle. The letter will consist of all the files you used in your story.